Hey everyone, and welcome to another Bachelor Breakdown from the Love is Stupid podcast. I'm your host, Ray Solomon, here with my husband and co-host, Jake Green. Hi, everyone. And our resident Nashville single guy, I won't say a bachelor, Dustin Summers. Woo! Hello. <laughs> um, so, so animated, so animated. Love. First of all, I just want to say uh, it's been two weeks since I've been on the Bachelor Breakdown, and these guys did a really fantastic job. Yeah, you did. I was very, I was a little worried about how it was going to go when you guys had, you know, your time to yourselves. And just like, about so. Really yeah. great. <laughs> yeah, and I want to say thank you guys for introducing me at my showcase. Killed they it. did an amazing, amazing job. So if you guys haven't checked out my new single, please go and do that. Absolutely. Check out the Love is Stupid podcast if you haven't checked that out. This last week we talked about religion and politics, which was a very interesting topic. Got a little heavy, but it was good. It was really well, good. Well. Um, and then for everybody who maybe doesn't know, we missed last week and the uh, because the women tell all because of the tornadoes that hit Nashville. We all live in East Nashville, which was really hardly hit. So yeah. um, if you are needing assistance or if you want to give assistance or donate to um, the relief from the tornado, you can go to Hands on Nashville, which is H-O-N dot org to donate or to say if you need any help yourself. Um, okay, so let's dive into the part one of the season finale of The Bachelor on let's our go. Bachelor Breakdown. Please. Where do we ready? start? I'm ready to rock. All right, so <laughs> let me give a little recap and then we'll dive in here. Uh, so this is part one. It started yeah. off with Hannah Ann going in to meet the family. They're in, let's see, Alice Springs, Australia. Right. So Hannah Ann is going to meet Peter, um, Peter's mom, his dad, and his brother, which we have some thoughts on later. But overall, sure. the meeting went really smooth. And then it moves on to Maddie getting to meet the family. And that one was not as smooth. Not as smooth. Not as a little smooth. rocky. Yeah, a little rocky is an understatement. It was not very smooth. Uh, from there, they go on to their individual dates. Uh, on the date with Maddie, which was first, they took a helicopter ride, and then she broke up with him, which we'll get into our thoughts in a minute. Uh, then it goes to Hannah Ann's date with him one on one. They get to play with some kangaroos, which was amazing. They were so cute. Oh, they were adorable. Uh, and then Come they, on. To, they, they were, were really cute. Adorable. <laughs> then they go to hang out in her room, and things were a little not smooth there. And then we kind of got left uh, on a cliffhanger, but the preview looked extremely interesting, which we'll get to. But let's go back sure. to the top of the show where Hannah Ann is getting to meet. Peter's family. You ready to do this, bud? Let's ready, go, ready, buddy. Ready, bud, bud? Come it's on. Good. It was a lot of bud. It was a lot, a lot of, of buds bud. in this one. Um, first of all, Alice Springs chicken, very underrated dish on the Outback menu. Is that right? It is. I don't know that I've People had it. People go for the Bloomin' Onion and the steaks. Alice Springs chicken. Check it out. All right. $13.99. I promise it won't be four minutes of this. I, I'm here to keep them on track. <laughs> you <laughs> weren't last week. <laughs> I know, I was A little off the rails. <laughs> we're going to talk, talk about the family first. Can we just, can we just, can we go ahead and just pro, pro well, the show? I feel like the, the family show? was pretty normal in Hannah Ann's day, except for the yeah. fact that, oh, that oh, like, you, okay. you know, they say you, like, marry your parents, you marry your mom, and mm -hmm. you marry your dad. Oh, my God. Wow. It was like looking in a mirror when Peter and Hannah Ann were sitting there looking at, like, his mom and dad. They were, like, leaning into each other the same way. The same it was the... I don't know, the vibes were the same. Do you yeah, agree? I, I agree as far as the vibes of the relationship, absolutely. Uh, but And I do agree that Barb like is like Hannah Ann plus about a thousand cases of Chardonnay. Like, I mean, that's <laughs> pretty much what we're looking at at this point. But, we didn't have Chardonnay. I know y'all got, got a lot of Barb thoughts. So <laughs> we do have do, a lot of Barb thoughts. Sure. I really do. Okay, well, so it really went pretty smooth. Yeah, Barb I and uh, I don't even know Peter's dad. Peter Singer. Oh, it is Peter Singer. He looks okay. like a 70s swinger version of Tom Skerritt. <laughs> it really does. Nice. Look it up. You know who Tom Skerritt is. Nice. The other one you said was uh, Captain Sully. Captain Sully was also Sully in there. Yeah, Sully in there. Both that. great references. Well done. I, I had a lot of time on my hands. All right. Episode, so. <laughs> okay, so, so let's just dive into the meat of it then. Uh, so Maddie starts her date, and before they even walk in, which I'm pretty sure that the family can see them talking, yeah. Starts out and it's just very ominous feeling. She's like, I'm not good. This is not good. And they dive into this whole diatribe about her expectations. They really did. And it wasn't going well. And we were sitting there watching this going, oh no, this is about to go south. Peter's heart's going to get broken. But you know how he brought it around? How do you, do you remember it? that line? How do you do it, bud? It was good. 
It was it a great been. line. So we all know that she has been raised in a basketball family. Her right. dad is a basketball coach. Assistant coach Assistant Auburn. Coach Auburn. Okay. Look at yeah. you. You know your sports references. I'm proud of you. <laughs> We're getting better as we kind of move along through the season. See what you've learned. But he ties this back to yeah, I'm sorry, a sports... I didn't know Auburn basketball before this. <laughs> it's okay. We forgive you. He ties it back to a sports reference. And the line he said was something along the lines of, it was like when you were in that game and you got your tooth knocked out, what did your dad say? He said, I need you back out there. And you said, okay. The second she said that, she was right back in that relationship. The way he was able to bring it full circle and get her back in, I was impressed. I will say that he's not normally very smooth, no. and that was actually a very good move. And her tone totally changed. It really point. did. You did not feel the same at all. I mean, like. whatever. I mean, he, <laughs> Peter, look, he's had one good game moment out of like 10 weeks. I mean, I mean, anybody, it's a good one to pull, pull it out on the mentioned. girl that you really like, though. I mean, he yeah. did. Like, I mean, he, he brought it when he needed Watch to bring it. It took him all season to get there, but I'm proud of him for doing it. Good job, Peter. You <laughs> nailed it. Well, we just got our eye roll. <laughs> we got no, like an, an in the moment eye roll. It's on it. Really? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, all right. Well, I, I still have some more thoughts on this, but we'll kind of circle back to it. Sure. Because they get up, they finally go in to meet the family, and it's very awkward right off the bat. So you can tell that maybe they yeah. they could see them sitting outside talking. I, I don't really know, but it was clear. They were. They were 15 yards outside of the door. There's probably a camera crew. There was probably like oh, they saw the yeah. sound guys. So yeah, sure. probably pretty yeah. inconspicuous. Um, but I thought when she was sitting there talking to his dad, first mm -hmm. of all, no, no to tell the parents about your fight. Like, let's just say that if you're dating someone, married to someone, whatever, let's just leave the parents out of it and say, you know, it's between our relationship. People get to, if you talk to your parents about the fight, they only get to see the fight, not the makeup. So let's not include parents in the fight because they don't ever get to see the wraparound. I agree with you, but the one thing that shocked me the most is how divulgent they were about what they were fighting about. <laughs> right. Well, I mean, to be fair, he had already told them the night before, but she maybe did or didn't she know that. She right in with it too. Weird. Also, when talking to the parents, probably stricken the phrase fantasy suite from your vernacular. <laughs> and sleeping together just, and all that. Fantasy yeah. suite, just Intimacy, lessons learned. Let's, Come up with something yeah, um, So for anybody watching us, we're doing this to preface our Love is Stupid podcast. Yeah. We get into dating life. This is going to be one of those conversations we're going to have in future episodes about Absolutely. do's and don'ts around the parents. <laughs> Can't wait for that. Don't talk about sex around the parents. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Ever. seriously. Um, but in addition to the whole fantasy sweet language, I thought it was her language talking to his dad was strange the whole time. She was like, I yeah. want what's best for him. My faith is very important to me and whoever I'm with. Like, it was very, um, it was very distancing. It was language. very, uh, calculated. The, 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 her work, she could and chose her words very, very carefully. Yeah. As I am doing And right it now. wasn't like yeah, you're including it. him. <laughs> Good job. So proud of you. Um, and then, of course, can I just say that someone is a Seahawks fan in that group? Because I don't want to hear it. You guys have your sports references all day long. There was a Seahawks hat. Love you, whoever is rooting for the Seahawks. So our quarterback's from Seattle. Every time there is a Seattle mm -hmm. reference, it doesn't matter where we're at. If we're driving and someone's got a bumper sticker or we're watching... Bachelor no and somebody's got no a shame. Seahawks hat. What do we hear? Seattle. We heard now it tonight. I, now I just do it with the same tone so that it I love annoys it. you or not. I We're being know. cheesy. Sorry. Okay, so let's move on to Barbara because I'm really excited to talk about Barbara. this. Oh. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I'm, I'm so torn on Barbara. I, Are I really, you? Yeah, because I go between being like, oh, hell no, to being like, I love her. Okay. So I will say that I love that she put Maddie in her place because I absolutely respect Maddie for choosing to remain a virgin and yeah. follow her faith. And if that's for her, more power to you. I love that. Definitely. I don't think that it is fair for you to put your own beliefs on someone else. If finding someone that has your own beliefs is important to you, fantastic. But imposing your beliefs on someone else, whatever they may be, is not okay, in my opinion. And I love Barbara for telling her that. Yeah, I thought Barb I thought Maddie's retort though was pretty on point as well. Okay. She did say, I am in a relationship with your son. Sure. And mm -hmm. even though he may be in other relationships with other women in the context of this ridiculous television show she was like sticking up for herself for it and i, I thought she yeah. managed it but i mean i, I, I did it, but no but then okay. i go on the other side with barbara of when maddie had left and she's sitting there talking to peter and saying <laughs> 
no, Maddie's not the one you need to bring home. Hannah. And like, that's not your place. She should have sat there and asked him, what do you think? Here's my opinion. And then let him make his own decision. Not, mm -hmm. she was putting things in his mind and was very aggressive about her opinion. So I appreciate you saying that because uh -huh. this gets us into my segment, the overplaying your hand moment. Is it Barbara? It's a hundred percent Barbara. Yeah. How is it not Barbara? Yeah. She just overplayed her hand by basically ignoring anything that her son wanted. At some point as a parent, you have to step back, remove yourself from the situation, remove your family and say, Peter, mm -hmm. what do you want? And I'm going to support you there. No. What did she do? She said, you're wrong. You need to go after Hannah Ann. That's the right girl for you. And I don't disagree with, with saying your opinion. I have someone in my life who has asked me my opinion and it was it's very hard for me to give it, but mm -hmm. no matter what their decision, whether they take my opinion or not, I will support them in the end. And I didn't really get that feeling from her. It was like, here's no. what I want from you. And that's it. But let's say this after nine, 10 weeks, ever how long this marathon of a disaster has been for you me. You love this. I hate the show. Uh, Peter finally had a little bit of a backbone and he actually had the right response. He said, what was it? He this. said, he said, you can't stop. He's like, you can't do this to me. He's like, you need to listen to what I'm trying to say. And I actually felt that that was the right move. Yeah. And this is my, oh shit, moment. Okay. I decided. Yeah, when he put his, I wasn't expecting him. Most modest no. boys will not put them exactly. on the place. No. Exactly. But yeah. he did the thing. He did what he was supposed to do. In that case was, he had people that were close to him, that cared about him, that were giving mm -hmm. their opinion. Yeah. But he was just like, look, I appreciate your input. I appreciate what you have to say. But at the end of the day, it's my call. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah. You get on board. And I wasn't expecting him to have that backbone. I wasn't I either. I was saying. proud of him. Way to go, Peter. For sure. Good job. I like this. So it was his best slick, not player move, but his most in tune thing that he said to Maddie tonight. Yeah. And his most backbone moment. There you he, go. Peter didn't have a bad night tonight. I thought he, he as played far, his as, well. as far as his, you know, integrity and his general character. Yeah. Like, like, he's know, figuring like, it out. He's yeah. still young too. So, you know, kudos How for him to learn. How old is he? Do we know how old I think he's 28. Uh, after this whole season, he's, he's still, all he's still in his Because I remember who was the, yeah. uh, Victoria, the one that he kept around just so he could hook up with in fancy stuff. Oh, yeah. Victoria. I, yeah, yeah, I remember. We were at one point saying she's 26. And he's like, I'm, she's like, I'm so old. I'm a grandma. Uh, and he's like, I'm 28. I'm mm -hmm. okay. Oh my gosh. Yeah. All right. So we move on to the actual dates. We're moving on a hair too quickly. Oh, oh, did, I, oh did I pass your no, moment? you have not, but you have left out one all-star in that family, and that is our white um, wine swigging, big eye brown buddy Jack. <laughs> so Peter's man, brother was oh, man. all about kind of throwing him under the bus on oh, that's on right. tape, and he really did. He, <laughs> Jack, hey. there was so much. There was so much there. Jack, yeah, okay. fearless. Just, why don't you, since I passed over it, why don't Jack you Jack had one of the best quotes Please. of the entire, and maybe television history. And when he told his brother, you like to get home from a trip and go out line dancing. And then he said, go, on, go to a club and go line dancing. <laughs> line dancing. I mean, it makes it seem a little more uh, hard than I've ever on national television. My brother says that, I'm killing him. Like, I mean, you go and get on Natural the reaction. He also was uh, talking about I mean, how, oh, how oh, exactly he's like, did you say about? <laughs> he's like, look, bud. Do you have different yeah, lifestyles? Are you going to be able bud. to? They all called him bud. They did. Okay, look, wait. bud. We know you like to get after it physically. Yeah. That's what he said. You like to party. You like to line dance. Apparently, I'm you like trying to, to call you a whore, you're, but you're physical and you like the line spade dance. A spade. You're, you're oh John Travolta and Urban Cowboy. So yeah, I, that's what you are. <laughs> so wasn't the best like cover mode of, a, of like the brother. You know, he's he's not the one that's going to keep the secrets. No, not, not going to happen. Jack's the next bachelor. Can't wait. Just bring him on Bachelor in Paradise. Oh my god. That's a great idea. He, he also was wearing Bachelor. I hope you're watching. I think he was also wearing Capri Pants. Mm. <laughs> Moving well, on. <laughs> well, and then, uh, oh, I don't even know if I can say it on here. Uh, we, we, had, we had a friend watching the podcast with us tonight who called Peter's Pants later in the show his LA fuckboy pants. <laughs> can you say Ooh. that? Can well, you I say just that? Did. His LA, I, I did. I'm you sorry. You like a sensor bar? Sorry. Anyways, yeah, uh, whatever. Moving on. Uh, okay, so going on to <laughs> the date. This is also a great story. It really is. Um, <laughs> with Madison, they go on a helicopter ride, and it just is awkward the whole time. Peter's kind yeah. of trying to, like, narrate and be the 
tour guide of the whole thing, and she's not <laughs> having it. Peter read let's the talk Wikipedia. about that narrating. Let's, Peter let's read talk. the Wikipedia page for you, LaRue, or whatever. It's called Air's you, Rock. LaRue. It's Air's Rock. It's prominently featured in Rescuers Down Under. Don't pretend like you haven't seen that. But that's what he obviously read that. that you blow my Is mind with your open? references. Oh. Rescuers Down Under. I've never even heard of this. Is this actually her a movie? fact checker Is this for a movie or breakdowns? Shit? So tell it's an animated cartoon about two little mice. Oh, yeah. This is a child's heart. Anyway, <laughs> moving on. Um, so at the end of the whole coverings, we, we can't follow this and this random. No, you lost me on that one. <laughs> you gotta be uh, good at trivia if you're gonna hang out with him, guys. Um, so she ends up breaking up with him at the end of this helicopter ride. Yeah, that hurt. That hurt for me. Did it? I was because just ready Madison's for it to my number one, as you guys know. If she wins, I win. Yep. So for her to break up with him, that was a devastating night for Still me. Still the right move for. I, I agree. I, just, I, I, I don't think he's right for him, her, but we'll find out. I just don't think she was that into him. She was no. not actually in love with him if she's gonna be like, this is so hard. No, it's not, otherwise you would stick around. Yeah. Like, I get it if you're just dating a guy in a normal situation and he's going and, and sleeping around, you have more than enough right to say you can't sleep with anyone else. Yeah. Or we're going to be a monogamous or I can't do this. Fine. But this is The Bachelor. She knew what she was getting into. Like, it, I don't know. You want me to give him a strategy moment of the night? Mm. Okay. Here's what I think she knew. I think Madison full well knew that she expected to get to the top three. I think she knew that she could come in. Play the game, play off her looks, play off her personality, which is great. Yeah. All these things. And she knew that eventually she was going to get to this fantasy suite situation. And she's, and I believe that she's adamant and, you know, fervent in her beliefs and everything. But it's yes, like her opportunity. Like my cynical part of me thinks that she did that silly that she could get to that point to make that statement and make Maybe. that sense. Is what I'm hearing you say that you think she was in this to get to the final three to be the next Bachelorette? To to make her point, which she did, but also basically had the cover to make an exit. Because her countenance and or her Or she soul, didn't think she was going to get there. No, no, no. I think, no, I think she, she totally, I think she to totally knew that she was going to get to number three. I think she totally knew she was going to get to the point that she could make the top three to make that Maybe. point. Okay. And once all that happened, her, right. her attitude totally flipped, which y'all saw. And yeah. So, here we go. You know yeah. what blew my mind is we waited this entire season uh, for her to divulge how she felt about Peter. We got it this episode. She said, I love you. But you know how she said weird. it? Yeah. She said something along the lines of, things are going great, I love you, and blah, 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 blah. Glossed over the fact that she said, I love you. Right. And Peter kept going back to her like, oh, I want to kiss you now. You just, you know what you just said to me? He was on cloud nine. He heard, I love you. She didn't give that back to him. What he did, well, what she did, she said, I was going to tell you I loved you at the, that right. night. Right. That's what she said. All right. But also, I think at that point, she'd kind of already made up her mind that she was going to leave, and then the parents were the nail in the Good coffin, point. so she wasn't going to say, I love you. I don't know, giving her the benefit of the doubt. But, Hard okay, so jumping forward, then the next day after this breakup where he's clearly devastated, and it seems like Madison is his first choice, he goes on his date with Hannah Ann, mm -hmm. and, oh my gosh, the kangaroo's so cute. Uh, totally obsessed. That would be awesome. We're getting rid of our dogs and getting kangaroos. <laughs> the, the baby kangaroos are the only thing that could <laughs> upset Jack as the winner of tonight's episode. <laughs> <laughs> it's, tough, it's a tough battle to talk through. But even with the kangaroos, you could tell he was just not having fun, which His I guess is not really fun. shocking because the whole season, it seemed like it has been extremely painful for Peter to have fun this right. whole time. Um, but... They go to hang out in her room after mm -hmm. the date, like post day date, and they have changed. She is dolled up, She's jacked out good. in this skimpy, cute little what dress. What was he wearing? He was wearing his breakup plum zip hoodie. <laughs> <laughs> Very similar to the color you're wearing. It's a great color. Nice job. It, and yours. Why are you making? I went different? red. You're you're it's, plum. Well, Neither y'all are wearing hoods, so we're not wearing hoodies. No breakup thread. But yeah, it. it when he walked in, you're like, oh, so he's breaking up with her. Cause she's <laughs> dressed in like this really cute little dress and he's just chill. Yeah. He's like Netflix and chill type of a night, which is not what you Wait, should be showing up I in. was so disappointed about this whole scene because I thought this was his opportunity to at least let her know that he sent Maddie home. Right. And they had this mm -hmm. conversation. It was awkward. You could tell he wanted to get something off his chest. He didn't step up to the moment and let her know at least Maddie was gone and maybe I'm a little juxtaposed to how tomorrow's going to go. Instead, he just walked out. I'm, I'm really torn on this because uh, on Colton's season when he was in love with uh, 
what's her name? This one over his head. Finally, oh, really a know. reference that goes Anyways, over his head. Ashley Kate. I'm going to say Ashley Kate is her name, it. right? Cassidy. Anyways, I don't know. Brittany um, Kate. Brittany he at least <laughs> sent the other two girls home and went after her. <laughs> Sorry, go ahead. Um, but I will say that it was a little torn because there was a very clear moment when he could have told Hannah where she was. Yes. It, it was a, a very obvious moment of like the tea up that it would have been yeah. easy. And so I, I feel like it was really wrong of him to not tell her. And then on the other token, though, if he would have told her, she would have been like, so do I win? And if he had second thoughts or didn't know at that point, that would kind of throw a monkey wrench in things, too. I understand what you're saying, but the culmination of this is all the final rose. So even if she knows that, she still knows that this is building up to the crescendo of tomorrow and the final rose, and the ring, and maybe a proposal and all that, I don't think that was inevitable if he would have told her Maddie left. I feel like as if I was in her shoes yeah. as a girl, and you're the bachelor, and you're like, hey, right. the other girl left, I would be expecting you to be like, so you want tomorrow's a formality? Like, I, I understand what you're saying, I but I think all these girls, all the girls and guys that go on to Bachelor know how the season will progress. And they know it builds up to that. So even in that moment, all season long, he doesn't tell, he shouldn't tell girls, at least it's kind of bachelor faux pas to tell them, I love you. So I think even in that moment, she wouldn't have thought twice about it and would have showed up to the rose ceremony. Yeah, I, I mean. That's my thought. Great production. So how did it wrap up? Well, but. <laughs> are we, am I getting ahead? Well, the, can I just say that they should have uh, cut away at the end. There was a oh, lot of no. up the skirt shot, and there was a bit of rewinding to find out if it was Some, real or blurred or I don't know. Someone knew it was blurred immediately. <laughs> One me. One of us three knew it was blurred immediately. Uh -huh. Yeah. They had an <laughs> inappropriate camera angle, let's put it that way. It, it wasn't the best. Um, okay, so... So, moving on. <laughs> so we've been waiting this whole time. Well, first of all, to find out who Barbara was crying over. We finally found that out, which seemed yeah, yeah. A, a little overly dramatic and kind of made sense why Peter's all about the drama. Just going to say, now that we know where he's coming from. But they showed a preview for tomorrow night, so you guys get us twice in a row, because we will also have tomorrow. Don't roll your eyes at me. Um, <laughs> and we missed last week. You got to do two. It's makeup anyways. We, yeah. Yeah, you're fine. Come on. Um, so they showed the preview, though, that you apparently... remember that moment when you lost your tooth and your dad said, get back out there? <laughs> this is tomorrow it. is that this moment is for you. <laughs> all right. I'm... Thank you, bud. I appreciate, it. I appreciate it, bud. Ow. I'm ready to get out there, bud. <laughs> So apparently Madison regrets her decision. Uh, they give us a little preview that, yeah. that says that she regrets it. So we don't really know how this is going to end. And then again, we get a shot of, of Barbara crying. So maybe he does choose Madison and Barbara starts crying again because it wasn't the person she wanted. We're not really sure. But what's important is I'm back in the game. You're still there. I'm You're still, still in the game. game. You're still and, my, and lastly, just because it's we haven't done it yet, my eye roll moment of the night, no other nominees tonight, because it is the quote of the year that's been used on every promo for the last five weeks. It's the bring her home to us. Because, I mean, good God, Barb. Barb needs It was a Barb, little yeah, overly you're, dramatic. You're, yeah, you're swinging for the fences that Oscar. No. Yeah, yeah, I know. Bring her home. Uh, can't, you can't do that, guys. Like, give your kids the... Let them breathe. to make their own decisions or mistakes who knows but you you can't get into you can't meddle in the relationships be supportive give your thoughts be supportive i totally respect her for telling your thoughts but maybe maybe a little yeah. too dramatic the eye roll moment i agree with seriously the only other thing yeah. i have is uh hannah's dad root sluice you're still out there in knoxville short drive down to nashville love for you to come out and hang out with us and watch the finale tomorrow night please do more than welcome to be here yep we'll bring them on and everything <laughs> Oh my gosh. All right, you guys. Thank you so much for watching another Bachelor Breakdown. We will be back tomorrow with the finale of the Bachelor season. Fine. Please check out the Love is Stupid podcast. You can get it uh, anywhere that you listen to your podcasts, or you can go to raysalmanmusic.com slash the Love is Stupid podcast. Got all of your links there. Leave us a five star review. Let us know your comments. We would also love to know what you think or what you want us to talk about. Mm -hmm. um, and make sure you go and listen to our last episode, which was about religion and politics. 
And to preface, we don't say our opinions on religion and politics. We just no. talk about it as it relates to dating. When and, will we release the next po uh, podcast? Wow. So, funny you should ask. Cool. So the podcast is not Bachelor related. I will say we do these Bachelor breakdowns, but the podcast is about dating in general. The thoughts from a married couple and from a single guy's perspective <laughs> and all the topics that people deal with. And the next episode, John, Go would you on. like to take it from here? The next episode details a date with a unexpected mother of four didn't know that one walking into it that was a fun thing so we talked yeah. a little bit about yeah. the complications and opportunities and the fun of dating single parents from three people who have no kids so it should be riveting <laughs> <laughs> we all have our own perspectives we do. Uh, but you also will get a bonus episode this week on the podcast Go and that on. is uh what not to do in dating from what we learned on pilot Pete's episode of, or a season of The Bachelor. I was going to say, you mean every episode. episode. Yeah, like every episode. So we'll be uh, detailing the things that maybe he did right, and then all the things he did wrong. It's a shorter list on one end than the other. So Thank you guys will get two episodes of the Love is Stupid podcast this week. There we go. All right, and we will see you tomorrow with the finale of The Bachelor and our last Bachelor breakdown of the season. See you soon, guys. Bye. Will you marry me?